Uh, y'all ready? Y'all feeling good? All right. All right, we're going to get this started. Three, two, one. Man, we will start off with a little creaky's creaks. Leave it in there. Leave it in there. Uh, what's up, y'all? This is the Stay in Power podcast, your favorite podcast out of Ypsilanti. I am one of your hosts, Shane Collins. He and his pronouns, born and raised in Ypsilanti. And we got a check-in question today. But first, I want to have, uh, oh, first, oh, we need to introduce our special guest, Miss Chris Campbell. Clap it up. 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 Okay, okay. She is a creative and enthusiastic communications professional committed to advancing, promoting, inclusion, and equity through engagement and education. Passionate about building relationships and connections between our local government, businesses, nonprofit organizations and people, I, she believes that through access to information and resources and by reducing systemic barriers, all citizens can be empowered to thoughtful action. She has significant experience working with diverse and marginalized populations in both the community at large and the higher ed classroom. This is Chris Campbell. If you would like to, please, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit more. Thank you, Shane. That is probably the best uh, LinkedIn intro that I've ever heard. I appreciate your enthusiasm. It doesn't read that exciting on paper, I promise. <laughs> okay. Um, so before any of those things, I'm a, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a local, um, I'm a Flintstone. I'm a writer, I'm a bibliophile, which just means I'm a reader and I'm a talker. So just prepare. That's just like a trigger warning that I can get a little long-winded, all right? <laughs> I I forget that I put myself on mute and, and <laughs> I responded to every word you said. I just, um, yeah, I'm a talker too. That, but that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Um, real quick, um, I would also like to introduce, we got some other people on the episode today. We got, uh, well, to my right, probably not everybody else's. Mm, Annika, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Annika, Anika Love, Anika Lisa Love. I'm changing my name today, actually, from Annika to Anika, changing the pronunciation. It's a new month, it's a new year. Um, I'm an artist, visual artist, poet, writer amongst other things. And I'm also a student, activist, and researcher. And I've been working with Staying Power since, I'm not sure, but we've been on Zoom the whole time, so since then. And I am um, she, her, and I love Ipsy because the water, the culture, the energy, and because it feels like home to me. Mm. Uh, next I, I forgot to explain um our check-in questions what do we love about ipsy um we just wanna we just wanna spread as much as we can um and from that though i think we can pass it over to ashanti hi my name is ashanti Ashanti Kenyatta Campbell. Um, I am a writer, an actor, you know, music creator, all the above. Um, my favorite thing about Ipsy is the people. Very kind people. wonderful wonderful um love the people that's all it's about right there um man and then last but not least if they are feeling up to it one love throw a little uh words in there we got late 
Hi, I'm Lay. I go by she, her, her. Well, not she, hers, but they them pronouns. Hello. Wonderful. Hey. Um, so without further ado, um, I think we all got a couple questions for you, Chris. Um, um Annika, you want to start us off? Sure. So we are wondering about what type of roles you play in the community. How does that feel, look, and if you could tell us about some of the community work you do? Sure. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I'm from Flint. One of the things that I love about Ipsy is that Ipsy is unique and completely the same, right? Ipsy is so similar to the small area that I grew up in in Flint. It's called Beecher. It's not really a city or a town. It's a, it's a part of a township, but it's very close knit. People look out for each other. Um, I came through elementary and high school and had all black teachers. You know, mainstream would tell you that our schools were subpar, but they were excellent because I was taught about myself. We were centered. There was no such thing as CRT or critical race theory because it's just how we lived. And I see those parallels here in Ypsilanti. And so I chose to stay in Ypsilanti after college because I see that same thing. People count out Ipsy. People, you know, don't put Ipsy in a running. They talk down about it, but it's a close knit community. You learn about yourself here. Um, I've been, I've gotten so much support here. And so my roles in the community, first I'm a mom, right? I'm a mama. My Facebook profile is Mama Chris because I've got two babies. Um, but because I'm the oldest of five, I tend to mother or big sister, everybody that I come in contact with. So I think my first community role is that of, of mother or big sis, right? Um, for my work, what I do for money, what I've done for money over the last five years is work in local government. First with Ypsilanti Township, now with uh, Washington County as a government. Um, and so you see me in that capacity, right? I think I wanna make government accessible to people. The government is made up of the people, right? But we see politicians as these big, heavy um, celebrity-like or like untouchable folks, it's, they're, they're people. And government is run by your parents and your aunts and uncles and your cousins, um, maybe even some of your friends and classmates. And so another part of my role, another role that I have in the community is just to make government really accessible for folks, to make the language accessible, to make uh, the process accessible to people. Um, I work in the community in a couple of different civic organizations. I am a member of the Order of the Eastern Star which sounds really uh, esoteric or really like scary because it's related to masonry, but it's really just like community service and potlucks and pancake breakfast, right? No, no uh, Illuminati involved, I promise. So that's one way that I serve in community. And then I'm also a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Rho Delta Zeta chapter here in Washtenaw County, another community-based organization. Um, and then I'm, I'm really just the one that will give you what I have. If I got it and you need it, you can have it. Um, I, until the pandemic, and I think that me, might be the name of like a collection of essays or poetry or something, until the pandemic, right? Until the pandemic, I was very active with um, a poetry collective called Untold Stories Poets. You all may be familiar with them. It's a collective of women of color who write poetry um, who make poetry very accessible. We are mothers, we are teachers, we are wives, we are, you know, folks from varying backgrounds. Some folks are native English speakers, some folks are, are immigrants, some folks are trans. It's just a really powerful group of women. Um, last week they did an installation, a poetry installation at the YDL downtown. Really amazing poets, really amazing women, just a really dope collective to be a part of. Um, so that's another place that I that I'm involved in community. Um, my kids go to school, so you might catch me on school board meeting. You know, you might catch me at the bake sale. You never know where you'll find Chris. I just I like I like to fancy myself a, a relatable person of folks. So whatever the need is, whatever the information is that needs to get out, whatever the relationships are that need to be built, I like to be a part of that. And so, I talk a lot, as I said. So I'll try to keep my question, my answer hey, a little more. Hey, talk your truth. We're not, <laughs> we're not here to silence nobody. We, 
In fact, that's the whole point of a podcast. We we want you on here too, talk. Please, please let me know. Um, but what you're saying, um, liking yourself, just kind of you know, you can you can kind of relate to everybody. You can meet people at all at all stages. Um, yep. and I hear that, that that's that's really dope. Um, yep, that's the goal. With that, with that though, so um, how does balancing your personal beliefs, personal beliefs, um in your professional life uh, differ from balancing them in your personal life? Mm -hmm. So I think growing up, especially in my, my young adult years, I fancied myself very much a very divergent. That's what we'll say. Contrary, I was a contrarian. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Um, very anti-system very you know f the man kind of situation um until i came to the realization that we are, we are it right it takes all of us and if all of us contribute then we're then we're the man that we're fighting right um so my personal values are very left-leaning very inclusive um i live by if if it feels good do it as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else right that's my entire life philosophy um and i have managed to put myself or to navigate myself to a place professionally where I work directly for a supervisor <clears throat> whose personal beliefs and uh, whose philosophy on work that we do is very much aligned with my own personal philosophy for my life. Um, and then the person that she reports to also has a philosophy that is very uh, inclusive, that is very, um, I don't know a better word than inclusive. Um, but I would say that my upline, like the people I report to and the person that she reports to, um, their beliefs and the way that they operate and the way that they move align with the way that I believe and the way that I move. I am very blessed and very thankful in that I've managed to do work and not just in this role. I used to teach at EMU um, and a classroom is a very empowering place, right? The, especially an undergraduate classroom. It's a very empowering place. I, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about people. I learned about systems working in a classroom. So I think I've always managed, excuse me, to do work where I have a certain level of autonomy, which is important to me, and where the folks that I work for have values that are similar to my own. Doesn't mean the situations don't come up when Chris might have to swallow, right? Might have to hold her tongue, might have to bite her tongue, might have to be more strategic about what I say and how, time and place, you know, Kairos and all of that. Um, but for the most part, I get a lot of support in the work that I do. I believe in the work that I do. Um, and I'm an Aquarius. And so by nature, it's important for me to have work that I believe in. Otherwise, I'm just, I'm kind of useless, right? Um, and so I've managed to put myself in a place where I believe in the work that I'm doing. I, do, I, I believe in the people that I'm doing the work with and I believe in the people that I'm doing the work for. I am highly favored. Shout out Aquarius. Word, out yes. Yes. Aquarius. We're amazing folks. People don't, they sleep on us, and that's okay. We're mm. good with it. <laughs> I'm not I'm not Aquarius, but my sister is. And you know, oh yeah. Very kind stuff. So, out here, out here being Aquarius. Um in your writing, mm -hmm. I have another question. In your writing, what themes do you tend to follow? Like what what topics you know, draw, you, draw you the most and why? I think it's evolved over time. Um, I'm, a, I'm a prose writer, so my poetry doesn't often rhyme. Um, but I like to, the things that, that I've witnessed are very much things about womanhood, um, themes about the margins, meaning being on the outside of whatever, you know, whatever. It could be a social group. It can be you know, the systems that we all live in and work in. Um, but if, if I were to read all the things that I've written or things that I've published, there's a theme about womanhood, black womanhood, blackness, um, coming up in the eighties. Like um, I came up in, I was born in 1980. I'm literally an eighties baby, right? There was no internet when I was born. Television did not really have remotes. You got up there with the clicker. And now I live on my phone. Right, I live, I cannot live without my phone. That's quite a span, 
right? To go from no technology to all technology. So that that tends to, that 80s vibe tends to come out in my work. I'm very much influenced by the books that I read, the other writers that I listen to. You'll see back here, I've got Zora Neale Hurston, followed by Toni Morrison, followed by um, Audre Lorde. Uh, I think I've also got Wood Brown, who is the poet writer from Detroit, who is also an artist that went to EMU. Um, Octavia Butler, who is an amazing, 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 like before Afrofuturism was a thing, Octavia Butler was writing Black folks into the future, right? Love her, love her to death. Um, so I'm influenced also by the, by the folks that I read, right? Those are some themes that, that come out in my work. And then lastly, I would say that my writing, I tend to, to take a moment in time or a snapshot of a person, like a real person that I might see on the street or an experience that I've had and focus, like hone in on that one, on that one moment in time or hone in on that one individual. It doesn't have to be a person I know, just somebody that makes me think or reminds me of someone or, you know. So Black Womanhood, growing up in the 80s, all the writers that I, that I love to read um, and then specific moments or people in time are the things that I think come out in my writing. I'll be very honest and say that my writing lately is literally just like lists. Lists, grocery lists, to-do lists, lists that I put on as Facebook profiles or you know Instagram stories. I think they eventually they'll be pulled into something cohesive and creative, but right now it's just a bunch of lists. Do you think that the list form is your like, evolution into adulthood. Like, is that <laughs> is is that maybe why like the list? Because I feel like as we grow older, we feel like it's just life just turned into a list of things just to get. Done. And I well, think I that says a lot about who you are and as a person, your priorities. You know, about like what you put on your list and the list you and like, how you form it. You know, Shanti, you may be on with something. I hope not. I hope adulthood is just not a list. <laughs> A bunch of boxes I gotta check off. I hope not. I just think that's that might be where I am in life now, you know, with kids and lessons and meetings and work. Um, but I think a lot of people can relate to it, right? I think a lot of folks can relate to that, to that list, list making and that sense of accomplishment you get for being able to even the, the smallest task, right? Being able to check off. It's like the, the sense of accomplishment. Cause I promise once you graduate from college, once you have a baby or or marry a spouse. Once all the big accomplishments are over, like all you got left is, you know, rice milk, check. Non-dairy cheese, check. <laughs> so you got to celebrate the little things. So maybe my lists are, are exactly the evolution. That would make sense. I'm going to meditate on that. I appreciate you for that. Uh, Shanti, Shanti trying to get into dangerous territory. I don't know either. <laughs> Aren't you doing too much? Hey, but it was a good question, though. Um, it was. It was, and I'm really going to yeah. contemplate it. Yeah, I'm mad because I, I do a lot of lists. I, I'm not even going to lie. Most of my life, people ask me a question, what's your favorite movie? Or they'll be like, what you like about this? Or where does this movie rank all time? I'll be like, it's like mm. top three. Yep, <laughs> I, like, yep. Top I do three. that too. <laughs> I do that with songs. I deal with books. I deal with movies. I deal with TV shows. Yep, I do it too. Um, what impact has uh, media like like books and 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 and, and uh, the music you listen to affected you as an artist? I don't think I or any other artist would be anything without the media that we intake, right? We're all a conglomeration of everything that we've read, listened to, every conversation that we've had, every TV show we've watched, every movie we've watched, right? Um, so it all has a huge impact. I think, I don't know if it was Toni Morrison. I think it was Toni Morrison who says something, and I'm paraphrasing, along the lines of like, be mindful of what you read now, be, be mindful of what you watch now because you're building your future self. Like you're literally building the things that you're gonna refer back to. That goes even for like inside jokes in your group of friends, right? Um, you're, you're building tomorrow's memories on the things that you do right now, right? So if you've been binge watch a show with your homies and then y'all make reference to it five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, it's all based on the media that you took in right now, right? 
And then another thing that I personally love about media, and I tell this to my students, and I tell this in any space that I can say it, we, we are the media now. This podcast is the media now, right? So I don't like to hear folks say, oh, well, the media portrays us this way, or the media portrays us that way, or the stories are so slanted. It's time out for that because you got this little computer in your hands and you can produce an entire film in the, on that computer in your hand. You can write an entire article that can go viral. You know, you can do a 30 second or 15 second clip that somebody on the other side of the world can see and it will shape those people's perceptions of you and people like you, right? So we are the media. I think it's really amazing. Um, and so be mindful of the things you listen to, watch, converse about now, because as you are creating media, you are shaping that voice and shaping that image for people on the other side of the world who may have uh, maybe exposed to it. Very. Setting your future self up for success. That's the yeah. name of the game right there. That's or the name of the game good, right there. At least good inside jokes. At least setting yourself at up for good inside at jokes. At least. You know? at the least oh my goodness um all right let me let me piggyback off of that question real quick and ask what media or uh what like what artists what writers uh poets uh, musicians have inspired you sure well i gave you my big like my top five right yep, 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 yep. Zora, zora tony audrey and octavia make up the top four right um mm -hmm. toss in some gwendolyn brooks who was the first poet I ever remember reading when I was younger. Um, what other media? I love, I think her name was Isabel Wilkerson, who wrote a book called, most recently she wrote a book called Cast. But before that, she wrote a book called The Warmth of Other Suns. And it's a story about the black folks that migrated from the South, but didn't come North. Like the story is, oh, the great migration, black folks came North and, you know, for the factories. Some people went West. Some people went to Vegas, some people went to LA, some people went to Mexico. And Isabel Wilkerson does, writes beautiful, beautiful prose and tells those stories, right? So Isabel Wilkerson is one. Um, I love Anderson Pack. Bruno Mars is my guilty pleasure. Um, the Roots, Tariq Trotter is like my top two MC of all time. So Black Thought would be number one, Tariq Trotter would be number two. If you know, you know. Um, I love Royce the Five Nine. I love, uh, oh, I don't even know this kid's name. Him and his wife are so hot right now, though. And I listened to him all the way to Michigan Adventure two weeks ago. Oh, uh, 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 Toby, Toby. Toby, yes, 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 oh, yes, Chris, Chris. yes, 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 yes. You already know you're speaking yes. my language right now. I'm, I'm trying to hold my tongue. <laughs> oh, you I talk love about it. about Anderson Pac, or, yes. or Anderson Pac, my apologies. Hey, Pop Pac, I don't this, know. If you're watching this, hey, whatever don't your name that. is, you're a good artist. We that's, love that's you, all. right. Hey, that's all we it is right them. there. We Man. love them. It's Silk Sonic. Never drop another single. We still love Anderson Park. Like, oh, real. oh, as a matter of fact, they lean up to dropping the album. I guarantee it. I don't know. I got a theory about it. I got a okay. theory. We'll see. Okay. See if my theory is right. I'm waiting to see. I thought they were they were doing intentional one hit wonder. Like I thought, because I think Bruno oh, Mars is a nice. genius. And yeah. I thought they were making a one hit wonder on purpose. Right, like um, there's so many other one hit wonders that I can think of that were hot songs, like the best songs of their time, but the artists never came out with anything else. So I thought that they were doing that on purpose, but then they just dropped this roller skate joint that came out like two days ago. So maybe that's not the plan. Maybe there is an album coming. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's but those are some funny. artists that I love and listen to. Um, I got books on books on books, some books that I just, I might not ever read, but I can't stop buying them. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm looking at, at a bookshelf right now. Like, what else could I share? Nendi Okafor, N-N-E-D-I. Okafor is an amazing speculative fiction writer. Um, LeVar Burton's podcast, LeVar Burton Reads. Like, I wait for that boy, new episodes to drop. Like, like people wait in line for Jordans. I wait for LeVar Burton's podcast to come out. Um, so there are a few podcasts I like, like Deep Funk, like Deep funk and soul music, particularly from like Great Britain or West Africa. I love Fila Kuti. I love Dinah Washington. Um, I already told you about Boog Brown. Google her when you get the opportunity. B-O-O-G Brown, Boog Brown. Google her when you get the chance to. Dope artist. I'm still hungry. Okay, I'm on a call. I need you to give me just a little longer, okay? Yes. 
and now we're having cereal for second dinner in my house. It's all part of the family. <laughs> it's all part of the family. Sometimes it you is. Eat breakfast for dinner. That's a, sometimes. They already ate dinner. Oh. I mean, not your... <laughs> like oh. 30 minutes ago, they ate dinner, but you hey, know. Round two. It's here. Eat it up. I'm fine with it. Man, that's what it's yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, I love her. I love Badu. I love uh, all the children of Badu because I can think of four or five female oh artists right now who you can tell are inspired, right? By Badu. Um, Ari Lennox is one. I love, love, love Ari Lennox. Like, Ari. She is from a different time, I believe. I think she's a time mm. traveler. I believe in time travel. Like practical, real is happening. We're just not in on it, time travel. They're sad. <laughs> hey. So yeah, I'm uh That's... I listen to I'm willing to give every anything a listen, anything a read. So yeah. Um I I asked that question because it was a good podcast question. Um yeah. that was a fire question for me though. We we just like man, I'd like to think I'm from a different timeline, you know. What you I'm might saying? be. I like seriously. I like I like to think I'm a little older than than what Les Song. Um, in the you know, man, we used to. It is one hundred percent within He's the realm of about. possibility. Oh. I I have been recently listening to a lot of uh, Willow Smith. Yes, and love all Willow. Of her work, like our whole body of work, like I really yes. listened to like her couple first, like really albums and most like her most recent one, and. She has a, like a lot of vibing music and mm-hmm. kind of connection to self and play mm-hmm. and the things that she talks about. It's kind of surreal. Like if you really think about it, like she's basically talking about the creationism in like a whole different like aspect and point of view. I, I love Willow. I, yeah, I get I get caught up in it. <laughs> I get caught up in it. And I'm proud of her parents for letting her be herself. I'm proud of her parents for letting all their children be them, like totally be themselves. Like if you didn't have to go to school, like traditional school, if your parents didn't have to work a traditional job, you can give your kids things to help them develop into their true selves and not just the box that society needs them to be in so that they can be productive workers, right? And so I'm really proud of Willow and I'm really proud of Willow's parents for for letting Willow do Willow, for real. That's facts. Shout out to Smiths too. That's why we right. at um, right. Um, for real, for real. Um also, Chris, um, we're gonna have to have you on here another time to talk about these schools. Um that's <laughs> that's that, that's definitely that's definitely a um uh subject I'm pretty passionate in on. I feel like I've been duped. If, if I have oh. to if I have to say anything, um, and, you know, just leave it at a sentence. I feel like I've been just Oh, I, I I I don't like it. My t- okay. Hey, till next time. Till next time. <laughs> um, Chris, um, I'm interested in hearing if you would like to close us out with a little song, song, little 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 poetry piece. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. So I'm gonna show you a book cover. I was gonna read this piece, but I'm not gonna. But I am gonna show you. I am gonna show you the book cover. So this is the book that the Untold Poets put out about a year ago. Uh, where is it? There you go. Um, this is the collective. You probably have seen or heard of some of these women, um, but it is for sale exclusively at the Blackstone Bookstore on Michigan Avenue. I think you can get it on Amazon, maybe. But don't get it from Amazon, right? Get it from Blackstone, if you can get it from Blackstone. I won't read from that one. Um, the piece I'm going to read is from a, piece, a book called Cellar Roots, Eastern Michigan's English department. I don't know if they still do, but they used to put out a literary journal every year. So students could submit work. Like, you don't have to be a writer or an artist to submit work. You just, you just submit, and then they decide. And so this piece is called The Cleveland Doghouse. And when I'm done, you can tell me what I'm talking about, okay? So the Cleveland Doghouse. You will not find the beautiful people at the Greyhound station. 
No, only blue collar, collard, mustard, and turnip green peace eaters here. Road worn and travel beaten, clutching transfers for buses that they pray to their old black batted Jesus will arrive on time. There are no beautiful people here. Only colorful faces run ragged with practice patients and antsy children, sagging well-worked faces with bags, dip, dip, with bags deep enough to swim in. No celebrity sightings, just a floor strewn with snot rags and bags holding all earthly belongings and longings to be anywhere but here. No beautiful people here. Just bus drivers and signs reading NY or bus and Mama C just cussing out young chicas in street Spanish. Local hustlers outside the front door pushing tiny packages of herbal relief into waiting hands, ignorantly purchasing less than what they bargained for and feeble attempts to escape their escapes from life. No beauty. No, the Greyhound station is not the place to find the well-to-doers. Only long forgotten cigarette filters extinguished from the soles of, of talking tennis shoes precariously scattered around the cardboard suitcases and gym bags. No one here has matching Gucci luggage. No one here has matching Gucci luggage. Though you may see an occasional Louis Vuitton flea market ripoff. Among the buy one, get one free bargain basement shoppers, the smell of hot dogs overdone rolling around the spittle mixed with curry, three day old bus must, dirty hair, tobacco breath and piss permeates the air and a thick layer of exhaust and cheap air freshener coats everything, layovers, stayovers and one unfortunate driver who lost her son in a drive-by last night and not enough money to catch a flight might prevent her from reaching her destination on time no beauty people here but there is hope hope to eventually get there from here and looking at the bus station you never know it there's a bus i wonder where it's going to the cleveland doghouse That was very visual and I could see and smell it and actually brought me back to when I was waiting in the Greyhound station. So thank you. That was very vivid. Thank you. Thank you, Anika. See, if you've been to a bus station, you know, right? And a lot of us have spent a lot of time in bus stations. Even before Spirit had my $90 flight, you could hop that $59, you know, Greyhound and make it to Atlanta or make it to New York, right? It might take you four days, but you can get there. <laughs> yeah. First of all, shout out to Bus. That's not right. Listen. Um, yes. Buses, buses be buses be in the community. I'll tell you that. Buses be in the community. Yeah. Yep. That yeah. poem was so uh so immersive with the details. Um also stop. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you be doing off the spoken word basis, Chris. But you got the you got a little umph to you. you got a little well, umph in your voice. Thank so, you. Um, <laughs> but no. Um. But what mm, led you to? Wait, wait. You have a bus poem. Someone says you might might have a bus poem. That's nice. And Ashanti Man. might have some bus poetry too. Oh, hey. Okay. Hey, you know, I got to... time tonight. I got time tonight. I would like to hear them bus if you're bus. if you're willing. I will always be loving the spit, but I'm not gonna lie. It's a it's a three piece piece, you know. Ooh, it's a it's a it is a three person piece. It is a three person piece. The young oh, queen are here. Okay. We, we miss we missing our third partner. Well, can we make a deal? Can I come back another day and hear this piece? Oh, you of can course. come back. Another day, and then a day okay. after that, and then a day after that, if you want to. Bet, bet, bet. For sure. Um, hey, mm. hey, hey, Molly, 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 Molly. got receipts. <laughs> Molly, <laughs> Molly. Um, hey, how about how about next time I will lead us off with mine, and then we'll hop right into the group piece. How about okay. that? Okay. I will hold you to that. All right. Um, man, you. okay. You no know, little uh unexpected turmoil just now um but uh you know i was gonna ask uh what inspired you to read that poem tonight it came to me two minutes before i turned on my camera yes well i was trying to figure out what to read or what what might be relatable and so like i said i brought it i brought it all down with me like pick one um i don't know it just felt right it just felt right. That's all. But I think it does a good job. 
of, I had a, a poetry instructor named Rob Halpern, H-A-L-P-E-R-N, who always talked about concrete particulars, right? Mm. Don't just say it smelled like that. Tell me, like, show me the smell. He always encouraged us to use all five senses. Um, and so you would submit a piece and he would rip it apart and say, don't say like flowers, it's trash, right? Don't say like flowers, that's, that's trash. Like, give me concrete particulars. Where? Let me let me feel the pollen on the you know on the hairs of your nose, right? Mm. Like let me see the snot in the tissue. Like he would he would force us to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite until you got imagery and sound and taste and touch and smell on a piece of paper. And so when I teach classes, that's try, that's kind of what I try to pull out of students. Like okay, what would it sound like if you took that line and scratched out all of the and plugged in some other word instead of the, what mm. would it sound like, you know, if you, everywhere you see something, don't see it, paint it, right? Um, yeah, it's just, it's good practice. It's a good, a good way to, to broaden your pieces. It's a good way to make sure that folks experience, you want folks to experience your writing, whether you're reciting it orally, whether you are a slam poet or whether you are strictly a page poet, you want people to feel something. And then to do that, you have to plug in to all five or all six senses, right? Mm. Y'all hit it here first, man. <laughs> you got to feel something if he going to do it. You got to yeah. feel something. You got to. Um, yeah. Man, drop it knowledge tonight. Chris, can we clap it up again? Can we do one of these one more time, man? Let's listen. It's all around everybody, including man. But Chris, thank you. this is knowledge too fire. I'm, thank you so I'm, much uh, for having me. Thank you for uh, coming on here, man. You know, um, we're uh, we just we just on here enjoying ourselves, man. Um, I I know I'm 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 happy to be here with these people every every day. So. Um, Thank you for coming into our space, um, blessing us with with uh, all your all your wisdom. And um, man, y'all already know what this is. It's the Stay in Power podcast, your favorite podcast out of Ypsilanti, Michigan. Shout out seven three four. Hey, we gone. Before you leave.